Howdy, and welcome to Chapter 6. In Chapter 6, we're going to be talking about writing performance objectives. We're now at the point in the instructional design process where we've completed all the analysis, and now we're ready for development. Here's where we are in the instructional design model. As you can see, we've, we've come kind of a long way. Um, we assessed our needs and identified our goals. And with that, we wrote um, goal statements. Then we conducted our instructional analysis. Uh, we wrote goals and we wrote uh, steps and sub-steps for sub-skills. We analyzed our learners and contexts. So now we're ready to develop and write performance objectives. So what is a performance objective? Uh, they're also referred to as behavioral objectives, learning objectives, or instructional objectives. So when you see this terminology, we're basically talking about the same thing, performance objectives. And when you see objectives um, like this, it's never about what the instructor's doing. It's about what kinds of knowledge, skills, and attitudes that the learners will be learning. So when we say instructional objective, it could be a bit misleading. So just keep in mind that the emphasis is on describing the learner and what the learner will be able to do. So performance objectives are clear and precise statements of what learners should be able to do when they complete their instruction. And these are very important in the process because they serve as a framework for creating assessments, which we'll be doing in the next chapter, and then creating instructional material, which we'll be doing for our project. And objectives also provide the criteria where we judge the quality of the instruction. We always go back and determine have we met the objectives. So if students can do the activities described in the objectives, then the objectives, um, the instruction is deemed to be successful. If learners can't do the activities, then the instruction probably needs to be revised. So what's the difference between goals and objectives? Up to this point, we've talked a lot about the instructional goal. So the instructional goal is what learners will be able to do when they complete a set of instructional materials in a real world context, or the context of the, um, where they're doing their job. And we call that the performance context. Objectives are written in the training context or the learning context. So what happens is an instructional goal becomes a terminal objective. We rewrite it to be a terminal objective, and it tells us what learners will be able to do when they complete the set of instructional materials, but in the learning context. So goal steps, which are subordinate skills, we rewrite those to become subordinate objectives. Okay, so there are three parts to objectives. Okay, behavior, conditions, and criteria. Uh, behavior is the skill that was identified in the task analysis. This is the skill identified in the goal steps or the sub-skills. Um, the conditions describe the prevailing conditions while the learner carries out the task. Okay, as well as what's available to the learner, what resources, um, in that context. And criteria talks about how well do we want someone to carry out the behavior. And it's used to evaluate the learner's performance. So here's an example uh, from the book about the parts of the objective. We have the conditions, a description of the tools, and resources that will be available to the learner when performing the skill. Okay, the behavior is a description of the skill, and the criteria is a description of the ac acceptable performance of the skill. Okay, and here are some examples which you can take a look at. Um, but the first one, if we look at in a work te team meeting, which is the condition, um, the learner will manage the line of discussion, which is the behavior. 
so the meeting stays on track. That's the criteria. Okay, so every performance objective has to have these three parts. Um, you always should always make sure your objectives are not universal objectives. Here's an example of a universal objective. Given a multiple choice test, complete the test and achieve a score of a, at least 9 out of 10 correct. Okay, and on its face, I mean, it has conditions, it has behavior, it has criteria. However, it really doesn't say anything in terms of the actual behavior we want the learner to have. Um, it just says that the learner will be given a multiple choice test, take the test, and achieve a score of 9 out of 10. I mean, unless we're actually teaching people how to take a test, this would not be um, a performance objective. It would be universal. Okay. So the first part of an objective is the behavior. And you get this behavior from the goal step. It's the type of behavior that we identified there. Um, here again, we have to avoid using vague verbs and when we go to write the objective from the goal statement. Okay, and, and we've talked about this before. We can't say that the learner will know how to do calculus because I can't observe that. I can't look at someone and know that they know something. Same with these other words, comprehend, understand, appreciate, and so forth. So we have to consider the verb very carefully used to describe the behavior. Okay. So one resource we can use is something called um, Bloom's Taxonomy. And you may have seen this before. It's a hierarchy model used to classify educational learning objectives into levels of complexity and specificity. So, and it also gives us some great verbs that we can use when writing objectives. And it's hierarchical because um, we start with on the bottom with remember. This is sort of the lower level learning. We move up and we can't understand something unless we remember it. We can't apply something unless we understand it and remember it, so on and so forth. Um, so it's a hierarchical meaning that um, Learners at the highest level, at the highest level, they're dependent upon all the other skills. Okay. So the second part is the condition. The condition is the set of circumstances and resources available to the learner when the objective is going to be performed. Okay, and the purpose, so several purposes. The first purpose is that it provides a cue learners can use to search the information stored in their memory. Um, and we do this a lot for verbal information tasks. Um, like suppose you want to ensure that learners could associate a particular concept with its definition or vice versa. So we could do things like this. Given the term blank, write the definition. Given the definition, write the term so on and so forth, or given the term blank, um, list its functions and roles. Okay, so it's just a way to um, jog the learner's memory and give them a, a cue uh, for these things that we've asked them to memorize. Uh, second uh, purpose is the resource materials required to perform the task. So um, we could have things like illustrations, tables, charts, graphs, written reports, articles, could also be physical objects, machines and tools, um, could be reference materials, manuals, databases, textbooks, things like that. So it just provides a list of what's available to the learner in order to perform the task. Um, the third purpose is to control for the complexity of the task and sort of tailor it to the um, target population. And an example of that would be um, if I ask somebody to, um, I'm teaching someone how to ride a bicycle. Well, is that a street bike? Is it a mountain bike? Is it a long distance bike? 
And then also, where am I teaching them to ride this bicycle? Is it in the city? Is it um, in a mountainous area? Is it off-road? Um, is it long distance? So on and so forth. So it, so it kind of puts more scope in there. And I think the book gives a great example about you want somebody to find something, to, to find a location, or let's say I, I'm making this up, I ask you to go to P.F. Chang's in, in Houston at the Woodlands, and what am I going to give you to complete that task? Um, I could give you a map, you know, I could give you a map of just the woodlands. I could give you a map of Houston. I mean, you can see where that makes it more complex going from the woodlands to Houston. Or if I really wanted to make it easier, I could give you a smartphone with GPS. Okay, so the, so the com conditions um, expand the complexity. Okay. Um, lastly, we a purpose is to um, aid in the transfer of training and transfer of knowledge. Okay, the more relevant or authentic the context is for the real world performance setting, um, the easier or probably more likely we'll have a transfer of training. So the more I can make the learning context like the performance context in the real world, the more likely I am to be able to have this um, transfer of training, okay? And this would describe that. Uh, the third part's the criteria. This is judging the acceptable performance of the skill, okay? So the important point is that the criterion in the objective describes what behavior is acceptable or the limits within which the behavior must fall. So, um, Consider the nature of the task to be performed um, would be one consideration. For instance, some things only have one correct response. Okay, there's only one answer, so that'd be pretty precise. Um, some things we could say we want the learner to do 80% of the time or four out of five. Um, so it, it depends what the behavior is and how exact we want it to be. Um, criteria can also be in time. We want the learner to complete something within two hours. It can be how we want the learner to create, to uh, perform the behavior. We want the learner to find something on a map um, without um, or 90 percent of the time. Okay, so um, so it kind of depends on the behavior and really how specific you need to be and what you're trying to get the learner to do, okay? So how do we write performance objectives? Um, the first thing we do is write down the original goal statement, okay? So we write down the goal statement and then we create a terminal objective based on that goal statement, okay? So we'll turn the goal statement into a terminal objective. Um, then we write down each of the goal steps, sub steps, and subordinate skills, and we create objectives based on those steps and skills. Um, so when you go to write an objective, if we ask these questions and write out the answers, it becomes quite easy. So for each objective, um, we're going to say what behavior performance is expected of the employee? What should an employee be able to do? So I ask myself, what is it I want them to do? And I write that out. Then secondly, what are the conditions that will prevail while the employee is attempting to accomplish the goal? I write that out. What are the criteria used to determine if they've completed the goal? I write that out. And once I have that, I combine these three things and then I have my complete goal statement. And remember that objectives are in the training context. So here's an example of an instructional analysis. Um, for the Crystal Database Application Company. Okay, so you notice we have the instructional goal, we have our goal steps, we have our sub skills, and then the line with our entry skills. So the first thing I would do would be to take my main goal statement and turn that into um, a terminal objective, okay, which I've done here. So if my goal is for recruiters, and technical imp implementation service staff 
to demonstrate skills necessary to meet their established department goals by utilizing proper phone use, behavior, exhibiting professional behavior and interpersonal skills when dealing with employees, applicants, and customers, and using proper etiquette at work-related meals and events. So I need to take that and turn it into an uh, objective, a terminal objective. So what's the performance? What, what do I want these employees to do? I want them to meet the established goals of the company. What are the conditions? I want the employees to participate in a simulation based upon customer and applicant feedback problems. And the criteria, I want them to score at least 90% or higher on the customer applicant satisfaction checklist. So I put those together and come up with given a simulation based upon customer and applicant feedback problems, recruiters and technical implementation service staff will meet the goals of the company by demonstrating solving these problems resulting in a score of 90% or higher on the checklist. Okay, and then I would go through each step and each subskill and go through the same process. I would ask what I want, what do I want them to do, what conditions, what criteria. Okay, and then I would write my objective. And you notice the numbering is consistent. Step 1.0 becomes objective 1.0. Here's a, another list for step 4.0 and sub-steps. So like step 4.3 becomes objective 4.3, um, so on and so forth. Well, that's the end of chapter six. I hope you found that writing performance objectives appears easier than writing instructional goals. I think once we're at this point, um, it's easier to do the performance objectives because we're concentrating on a specific kind of behavior that's pretty narrow and I think that's easier to visualize and to create an objective for. Thank you.